Stay all laid up. Now, tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That's the go getter energy that moves anyone out there to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy. This show right here that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is creating a compelling presentation. Now let's get a definition of this word, compelling. Compelling means evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. It's a juicy definition. Let me say that one, one more time. I like that definition. Compelling means evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. How would you like to be that kind of, how would you like to have that kind of presentation about yourself or about your work or about your, I think it's yourself and your work and the things that people say about you, just your, your image, your energy, your aura overall, how would you like it to be so compelling that it evokes attention and admiration in a way that is irresistible? If you want people to pay attention to you, there need to be some aspects of your being that draws eyeballs or ears or what else, maybe something that they smell if you happen to bake food or you make fragrances. It needs to be something about your presentation that uh, piques other people's senses. And today I'm gonna give you some options for doing this. These are not, this is not an extensive list. This is not everything you could possibly do to have a compelling presentation, but one of these would actually help. If you're able to uh, enact any of these, it will help you to have a much more compelling presentation. It will draw people to you just because you have one of these elements working in your favor. Number one, be famous, be well known. And the topic, once again, I didn't even say it. Number one, the topic is creating a compelling presentation. Point number one is being famous, being well known, being name recognizable, face recognizable, a whole bunch of people just knowing who you are. The definition of famous is known about by many people. All right, if a whole lot of people know you, that makes you compelling just on that alone. You know, when I ever I have reached out to, for example, let's say uh, speaking gigs, and sometimes they have a, uh, a call for presentations, you gotta fill out this little form so they can choose their speakers. They'll often ask something like, hey, how many followers do you have on whatever social media platform? Or how many email subscribers do you have? Or sometimes when I go on people's shows, they ask things like that. Well, how, many, how many followers do you have? What kind of audience do you have? I got asked that when I did my publishing deal for my book, Work On Your Game. They asked me, how many followers do you have on Facebook? How many you got on Instagram? How many you got on YouTube? How many you got on Twitter? They want to know these things because they want to know how known you are. Because the more known you are, according to them, and this logic is definitely not accurate, but I used it to my advantage, their logic is the more known you are, that means, okay, the more books this person can probably sell because these many people know who this individual is. And again, that is not always necessarily true, but it can work in your favor as I learned with the publishing deal and I learned in, I'm explaining to you that you're gonna learn through what I'm saying here on point number one, just being known alone. Doesn't matter what you're known for, doesn't matter how you became known, the more people that know you, the more compelling you become to other people who don't know you simply because they know that other people know you. All right, if other people find out that a bunch of other people know you, then the person who has never heard of you wants to know more about you simply because these other people know you and they don't even know why they know you, they don't even know how they came to know you, they don't know if there's any substance behind you being known. Just the fact that you're known makes you compelling to other people. This is just the way that it works in life. Don't try to explain this, don't try to understand it, you could if you want to, but as the late, great Jim Rohn famously said, I wouldn't sign up for that class. You don't need to understand why, just understand that it works. When you are publicly known by your name or by your face or by your, your likeness or your work or whatever, people will listen to you and be interested in you just because of who you are. All right, there's a song by the rapper by the name of Future. He said on one song, he said, I got these chicks who are nine and up. They want to fuck me just because who I am. And it's a, it's a funny line, the way that he says it in the song. But, and the reason that I thought of that is because it's something that he said in the song and is 100% accurate. I don't know Future. I've never hung with the guy. I never shook his hand. I don't think I've ever been in the same room as that as this guy, Future the rapper. But I believe him 100% when he said that in that line. That there are chicks who just want to be around him and hang with him and do whatever he wants them to do just because he's Future. So they can go home after it's over and say, you know what? I was, I was, I spent the night with Future. I was in a hotel with Future. I was in a club with Future. I got, I gave Future my phone number. Listen, I've seen this happen. I remember being out um, when I was probably about 21-ish 
when Allen Iverson was the guy in Philadelphia, uh, playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. And I saw him in the back of a, an SUV outside of an area that was heavily, that was a club area. This is where everyone would come to the nightclubs in these places and AI was in the back of his SUV and the car was stopped in the middle of the street and the windows rolled down. That's how I saw him. And there was a girl who was standing right next to the car and she said to Alan Iverson, she said, hey, you want my phone number? <laughs> and he nodded his head yes. And she gave it to him. Why? I don't know. Is it because Alan Iverson was so beautiful? Is it because he's such a great guy? Is it because uh, he was really interested in the girl that much? I don't think it was any of that. I think the main thing is because he was who he was. There was a whole bunch of other men out there who might have been looking at this exact same girl, but she went to him simply because of, I think, and this is just my theory, is because of who he was, because of his name. When you are well known, other people just want to be around you because for it's just a it's just the way that we're wired as human beings. Somebody who's known by a whole lot of people, we just assume, and this is me ex trying to explain why this happens, we assume that there must be some value behind this person. There must be something about this person that makes them a person that we want to know about because look, all these other people want to know about them. They want to know about them, so I want to know about them. This is what in, sport, in the sports world, sometimes we call this jumping on the bandwagon. When a team in sports is really successful, all of a sudden, overnight, they get a whole bunch of fans. There are a whole bunch of people who want to be fans of this team who weren't fans before. And why is that? Why did everybody become a fan all of a sudden of this team? Why? Because they're successful. And then other people become fans because everybody else is a fan. And everybody else becomes a fan because everybody else is a fan. When people start jumping on your bandwagon, other people are going to get on the bandwagon just because. If you get on a social media platform and you start to amass followers and you get more and more followers, eventually you, get, you hit this tipping point. I heard uh, somebody say this, a guy who has probably a million followers on social media. He said there's like a tipping point when you get to a certain level. Now, other people notice that you have X number of followers and they follow you, not because they know who you are, not because they're interested in your content, just because you got so many followers. They're like, all right, there must be something about this person I need to know about. So let me follow them so I don't miss anything. They follow you just because, just because you have followers, not because they actually heard of you or they need anything that you're offering or that you're giving them anything of value to their lives, but simply because other people are doing it, they want to be around it. I've heard famous people say the same thing that I've said five years ago on this very show. There are things that I said on this show in 2017, I hear somebody who's way more famous than me, maybe a hundred times more famous than me, say the exact same thing, and people respond to the famous person saying it as if what they said was, was spoken by the oracle, simply because it came from a famous person. And this is just the way that it works. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just pointing out this is the way that it works. Just because of the number of people who know a person is, know who a person is, their credibility goes up and people want to be around them goes up and their ability to compel the fact the thing that makes them that definition evoking interest attention or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way it goes up just because they're known and i want you to understand something there's a little there's a hack for being known for, there's a hack for fame you can manufacture fame via social media very easily if you are willing to either spend the money to get it or you're willing to uh, do whatever you got to do to get people to pay attention to you, whatever you can do that draws attention. And there are many different ways to do that. Or you can spend money that draws attention. Those things can make you famous on the Internet. You want to be Internet famous and then you can learn to leverage that Internet fame that can actually work for you. And many people have done it. Now, make sure before you actually start doing that, you actually have a plan to you know, get your return on investment. If you don't have a plan for your return on investment, don't just make the investment and then say, what now? All right, don't do that. Point number two. And actually, one more thing on point number one. That might be worth it, depending on your approach. Point number two. Today's topic, creating a compelling presentation. Definition of compelling. I like this definition so much. That's why I keep saying it. Evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. Point number two. Be a high energy individual. Why, is, why does high energy make you compelling? Is because energy attracts attention. And we all know the law of karma. The energy you put out is the energy you get back. If you put out zero energy, if you're a low energy individual, then you're not gonna get any energy back. Donald Trump famously in the 2016 election, the lead up to the election, I believe they were still in the primaries, he labeled Jeb Bush, who's George W. Bush's brother, he labeled him low energy Jeb. And it, the nickname stuck. And I thought of it just when I said this, low energy is going to attract very little energy. When he labeled that guy that during one of the, the Republican debates, it stuck and people laughed at Jeb Bush and Jeb Bush wasn't able to live that down. And then of course, Trump went on to win. And now people are remembering it because Trump ended up, you know, ended up actually working in his favor. Being low energy doesn't compel. All right, low energy does not get other people to pay attention to you. 
high energy people are compelling and interesting to watch, even if they're not saying much, even if they're saying something banal, even if they're doing something dumb, why? Because you always wanna see what they're gonna do next. A high energy person, you just wanna see what they're gonna do next, what are they gonna say next, and I want you to understand that high energy doesn't necessarily mean you need to be jumping up and down and sweating through your clothes and screaming at people all the time. You could be high energy while sitting still from your seat. You can be high energy just in the way that you talk. You can be high energy in just the things that you say because the things that you say get other people's energy going. So you could just be saying eccentric things or saying things that just get people riled up. And that's high energy because your words are getting the energy to come out of other people. So again, high energy doesn't mean you gotta be jumping up and down and going through all types of you know, histrionics. It's just the way that you present yourself. Dennis Rodman, for example, former NBA basketball player who we seen all through the Chicago Bulls documentary, he was a high energy guy when it came to basketball. Just the way that he presented himself, the way that he talked, the way that in many ways he seemingly just didn't give a fuck, that was high energy. And it got other people to pay attention to and notice him just because of the way that he was. It's not that he would run into a room and start screaming and yelling and jumping up and down, he didn't do that. But his presentation brought the energy out of other people. There are professional speakers out there, especially uh, black men. A lot of black men who become professional speakers, especially those who are faith-based, they do this in their speaking. They are, you see them actually literally sweating through their clothes and jumping up and down and screaming at the audience and catching a Holy Ghost and preaching to their audiences. I see a whole lot of speakers like this. Les Brown is a guy, uh, Eric Thomas is another guy, and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. It's not my style, but I see a lot of them doing this and there are many similarities between a lot of them because they are these high energy guys and that energy works. It works for certain audiences. This is, these are the things that draw people's attention. So again, I'm not dissing them, I'm just pointing out this is something that actually works for them because that's what works for them. Doesn't mean you should do it, but I'm just giving you an example. Many people I see on YouTube or Instagram are like this. They have this high energy or the things they say and do gets energy from other people and it works for them. It keeps people watching you even if you're not saying anything. All right, not to say that these people that I mentioned don't have any substance, but even if they didn't, when they're bringing that type of energy, it gets people to pay attention simply because people are attracted to energy. When I was in college, my junior year, when this new coach came in, this before he cleaned house at a basketball team, he had basketball tryouts. So that year at tryouts, we probably had like four times as many people try out for the team my junior year than tried out my sophomore year. Because sophomore year, the coach was already established and the coach made it pretty clear, all right, you're not gonna make the basketball team. You can try out if you want, but they have to have tryouts. NCAA rules is you must have open tryouts. Everyone must have a chance to make the team. Doesn't mean they're gonna make it, but everybody gets a chance. Now we had some walk-ons who made the team my sophomore year, even though the coach made it clear, like, everybody's not gonna be able to make it even if you think you can. But the next year, with the same number of students enrolled in campus, four times as many players tried out for the team because I guess everybody saw it was just open season to try to make the basketball team. I guess that's what happened. So we have tryouts and this guy named Justin, he was not a very good player. We had two Justins. So this is the Justin that was the guard. So if the other Justins listen, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the Justin that was the guard. He was from actual, he was from Altoona, the city that our school was at. And Justin was not a very skilled player. And if he's listening to this, he knows that he wasn't a very skilled player. He had, from what I can remember, he did not have a single definable basketball skill. He was not a good ball handler. He was not a good outside shooter. He was not very athletic. He was not physically strong. He was not physically imposing. He didn't have a super high basketball IQ. He was not a defensive stopper. He did not have not one definable basketball skill. And if he's listening to this and I'm wrong, Justin, you can let me know. He didn't, but he made the basketball team. How did Justin make the basketball team with no skills? Here's how he made it. He was a very high energy player. He was what they would call a hustle player. And in college basketball, hustle players usually can make the roster. Now, you can't go that far. You can't get into the pros with just hustle alone and no skill. And Justin, I don't think he had any ambitions to be a professional player. But in college, he made the team just by hustling. And I remember there was one day early in the year. This is when we were still kind of in the tryouts stage. Yeah, we're definitely in the tryout stage still at this point. The coach was going through one of his uh, during in-practice tirades on the team because he felt like somebody wasn't doing something. And he said, there's only one guy in this gym who has made the team so far. Only one person has a spot. And you know who it is? It's Justin. And he pointed at Justin. He said, you know why Justin's made the team? Because he plays harder than everybody else. He's hustling harder than everybody else. He's diving on the floor for loose balls. You know, he's just working harder than everyone else. 
And Justin was di diving on the floor for loose balls and hustling a whole lot. And that was the thing that made him stand out. He became compelling and everybody noticed this guy who had no skills. He was a scrawny, maybe six foot tall kid with no real definable skills. He was standing out amongst all these other players who were a lot of whom were better than him simply because he was high energy. All right, so Justin, if you listen to this, I'm not dissing you. I'm actually using you as an example, but you, let's keep it real. You didn't have any skills. But the whole point is this. In high school and college, in basketball, that can get you on a team. All right, any of you who was high school player, any of you who played high school or played college ball, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If I got any coaches listening to this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When people have that level of energy, they get on the roster. They might not play a lot. They might not put up any stats and their career may not go any further than that team in that season, but they will at least make it simply because they bring the energy. Bringing energy draws attention, ladies and gentlemen. You want to draw attention, step your energy up. That alone will work. Point number three. Today's topic is how to create a compelling presentation. Point number three, be a good looking individual. Right? Being looking good is compelling. Okay, now you might think that this is kind of a, uh, this is, there. you know, somebody could have very little substance, but they look very good. Is that compelling? Let me ask the question. Actually, before I put a thought in your head and tell you what I think you're thinking, let me just ask you the question. Have you ever seen someone who you had no idea if they had any substance, or maybe you found out that they indeed had no substance whatsoever, but they looked so good. They were so appealing to your eye that you couldn't stop paying attention to them. Have you ever seen this type of person? Oh, you have, huh? Well, that's why I'm putting it here as point number three. Let me give that definition of compelling again. Evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. Men, gentlemen, those of you who are heterosexual, have you ever seen a woman who looked so good that you were interested, you paid attention, and you actually admired her looks in a way that was kind of irresistible. It was hard to stop looking at her. Any of you done that? Oh, you have. Ladies, have you ever seen a man who fit the same description? You were interested, you paid attention, and you admired the way that man looked. Maybe you didn't do anything. Maybe you didn't act on it. Maybe you're married. Maybe you got a boyfriend. Maybe you weren't available at the time, but you saw him and you were like, man, this guy looks good. And you had to keep looking at him. Even though you had no intentions on doing anything, you were just paying attention just because of how well that person looked. You have, huh? Of course. Looking good is compelling, ladies and gentlemen. The pornog pornography industry exists because looking good, just looking good alone compels people's attention. The pornography industry makes millions, probably billions of dollars every single year in commerce simply because people will pay to see someone who looks good. Now, they may be doing things, but just looking good alone, just the pictures alone are worth money. Being good looking is compelling, ladies and gentlemen. You want people to pay attention to you? All right, step your looks up. Whatever you think that means, that'll get more people to pay attention to you. Even if they're already paying attention, keep your looks up or step your looks up even further, you'll get more people paying attention. If people like how you look, just that alone, no substance whatsoever, will get you attention. Now, if you wanna have some substance that goes behind your look, then I would suggest you listen to Masterclass number 1286. The topic is how to be a person of substance. Science has proved though, this is scientific. This is not just me, this is not just conjecture or something I'm making up. Science has proved that people, that means me and you, we want to be around good looking people just because of their looks. We like hanging around people who look good because it makes us feel good to be around other people who look good. Now, whether you think you look good or not, doesn't matter. You wanna be around people who look good, maybe because they compliment you and you look good too, or maybe because they make you feel better and maybe you don't think you look that good. Whatever you feel about yourself is not about you. You wanna be around people who look good. Instagram models, that's a phrase that some people use uh, derisively these days, but I want you to understand, girls who get on the internet and they do exercises online showing, while at the same time wearing clothes and showing off their physical assets based on the angle of the camera, all right, they can become very, very popular people. Why? Because of their looks. It's not because of their, it's not because of their athletic expertise, because when I, whenever I see Instagram models doing workouts on the internet, they're all doing the same exercises over and over. They're all doing the same thing. All right, why do I, what am I getting from any one of these ladies individually as far as their athletic expertise? Not much, in my opinion. They're all doing the same moves, but it's the looks that make people pay attention. It's not, their, it's not because they're gonna help you get in great shape. It's not because they are experts in uh, kinesiology. Some of them probably don't even have degrees in that. They probably couldn't teach a class if their life depended on it, but people sign up for their, their a 12 week booty blaster program or sign up for their nutrition program. Why? Why do ladies sign up for these girls programs? Why do women sign up? A woman who's interested in men 
They're not interested in women, but they sign up for this good looking Instagram models workout program, even though her workouts are the exact same shit that a thousand other women are doing on Instagram. Why do you sign up for that one woman's program? I'm gonna tell you why. You sign up for her program because you notice the type of attention, the way that she compels other people's attention and you want a little bit of that to rub off on you. That's why you sign up. Not because you think she's that smart or that she has this perfect program that's gonna make your body look exactly like hers. No, those are not the reasons. You might logically say that to justify your decision, but the real reason is because you see the way that she compels and you wanna to compel too and that's why you listen. Gentlemen, why do you follow like your favorite rapper on Instagram. Like, why do you follow a rapper on Instagram? Like, he ain't rapping on Instagram. Right, if you wanna hear him rap, you gotta get on Spotify or Apple Music or Tidal or SoundCloud, right? So why are you following that rapper on social media? You're following them on social media because the way that they make their music gives you a certain feeling, a certain emotion, and you want some of that to rub off on you. So every chance you get to be around that person, even if it just means through the phone and looking at their pictures, you take advantage of it. This is human psychology, people. This is the way that it works. And understand everything that I'm saying here, you can make these things work in your favor. All you gotta do is turn these around and say, how can I do the same thing? How can I make my presentation in such a way that other people wanna be around me just because of that? All right, I'm, you might love somebody's, again, their voice and the way that they sing. Why are you following them on Instagram? Looking at their picture doesn't have anything to do with the songs that they sing, does it? Or does it? Point number four. Actually, I'm not finished with point number three, I'm sorry. I got, I got more on point number three. Not a lot more, but more. Point number three. People are paying attention, like I said, to the, the online IG model, if you want to call them that. And listen, IG models, I'm not dissing y'all, all right? We appreciate all heterosexual men. We all appreciate the Instagram models. It serves a purpose. It's not a bad thing. We appreciate them a lot. Females who are listening to this, if you want to get more popular on the internet, I'm not suggesting you do this, but if you want to get more popular on the internet and you want to get really popular really quickly, all you got to do is either take some of your clothes off or wear tighter clothes that shows off more of your figure. I guarantee you'll become more popular overnight just by doing that. Now, again, I'm not saying that you should do it, but I'm just saying it's obvious that it works. All right, now if I'm wrong about that, let me know. Point number four. Today's topic, once again, is how to create a compelling presentation that definition of compelling one more time evoking interest attention or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way here's the fourth way you can do it develop a captivating personality now captivating personality that means something about the way that you think talk present yourself maybe the opinions you have any of these things can draw attention to other people i think uh, speaking of myself personally i think my best skill when it comes to the the thought leadership space is not that I'm not a rah-rah hype jumping up and down person. I'm not publicly known like that. I'm not like famous. I don't walk into the mall and people are like, oh man, that's that's him. And while I do stay in good physical shape, I don't sell myself with that. I don't sell myself with what my body, how my body is composed. What I sell is my perspective. The way that I look at things, the way that I explain things, the way that I take a topic that maybe you thought you know about and you think you know what I'm going to say and I come from a completely different angle and I explain it in different ways or I might present a topic that you think you disagree but then when I make my argument, you're like, okay, I still disagree but the way you built that argument, I got to at least respect it. That's what I, that's what is my angle, I think. Maybe it's a different angle. Maybe there's something else about me that compels you to pay attention. If there is, tell me. All right, the better I know, the better I can use that to my advantage. But having a captivating personality can be the thing that makes you compelling to other people. Again, that could be the way you think, the way you talk, the way you present yourself. It could be the opinions that you have, whatever it is about you. And the way you present yourself could be part of your look. So understand that you can mix and match some of these elements that I'm giving you here today. And again, this is not an exhaustive list. There are other things you could do that I'm not mentioning here today, but these are the ones that stand out the most. Few people ever come to me and ask me, Dre, how do I lift weights? Or how do I write a book? People have asked me that, but not as many people ask me that as ask me, hey, what's your, your perspective around writing a book? What's your perspective around uh, lifting weights? How do you get yourself in the right frame of mind to actually do it? It's the way that I look at things and how I approach things mentally that compels people to pay attention to what I'm saying. Now, do I have some energy behind me when I'm getting on this mic and when I'm writing things in my books? I would like to say so. 
but I don't think that's the main selling point. It's not like, man, this guy has so much energy. That's why I'm paying attention to him. It may be the energy of the way that I'm saying things. I put that under the personality angle. That's the way that I would explain it. Now, again, you can see it differently. And if you see it differently when it comes to me, definitely let me know. So the better I know how I'm being seen by the world, the better I'll be able to custom and tailor it and make it work to uh, for better results, better leverage it. Personality, ladies and gentlemen, you can express your personality through the way that you walk and talk. You can express it through the way you dress, through the way that you speak, your writing, if you happen to put pen to paper or thumbs to keyboard, and your music. If you're a musician, you can express your personality through your music. Like Future said in the song, he's expressing his personality. I, never, I don't think I've even heard Future just talk regularly. The only time I ever heard Future's voice is on his songs. I've never heard an interview or watched anything or read anything from Future besides listening to his music. And he expresses his personality through his music. And people assume that's who you are in the way that you express yourself through your songs. If you happen to be a musician, through your art. If you're an artist, you draw or you paint or anything like that, you express yourself through that art. Andy Warhol was famous for this. He expressed himself through his art and he wouldn't do too much talking. He wouldn't do too many interviews. He wanted, if he wanted, people wanted to know about him, he would direct them to his art and that's the way you figure out who I am and you draw your own conclusions. Very powerful technique that he used there, which would be hard for a lot of people these days who can't uh, resist talking. They can't, they don't know how to shut up. Point number five, last one. Today's topic is how to create a compelling presentation. Understand that when you can combine these elements, this is the fifth point, you can do even better by multiplying their effects. So for example, if you have a compelling personality, but you also look good and you're also high energy, all right, you can become a very compelling individual. If you're a famous person and you have really high energy and you're good looking and you, have an, and you might have the dullest personality in the world, but you look good, you're famous, and you have high energy, people will pay attention to you. You might not have anything to say. There's nothing up there in, your, in that head of yours. It's pretty empty, but you look good and you're famous. All right, people will pay attention to you just because of that. So you can mix and match these skills. You don't have to have just one. When you learn to mix and match these and you can maybe even hit the jackpot and master all of these, have all of them at the same time, you can become a very compelling individual. Let's think of somebody. Who do we know who is, if we look at all these, who is famous, they have pretty high energy, they're a, at least a fairly good looking individual. They have a captivating personality, meaning they have some interesting opinions and ideas. Again, captivating doesn't mean that they, you agree. It doesn't mean it is good or positive. It just means it's captivating. You have to pay attention to it. And yeah, they're all, those are four things. So captivating personality, they look good, they're high energy, and they're famous. All right, anyone you can think of who knocks down all four of those, I guarantee you that's a person that people pay attention to. Go look them up, go Google that person. I guarantee you wanna see a lot of stuff being said about them. We'll look them up on whatever platform they're active on. They're gonna be a lot of people who are subscribed and following and wanna know what that person is doing. Not necessarily because they're providing any substance. It's just because they, are a compel they have a compelling presentation. When you compel, people cannot stop noticing you. Let's recap today's class. Was how to create a compelling presentation. The definition of compelling, evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. If you want people to pay attention to you, you need some aspect or aspects of your being to draw eyeballs. Today, I'm telling you how. Number one, be famous, i.e. known about by many people. It doesn't matter why you're famous. When you are publicly known by your name or face, People want to be around you just because of who you are, like Future said on his song. I got these girls that want to fuck me just because of who I am. I've heard famous people say the same thing that I've said, but they got a much bigger audience and people act like what they said was spoken by the Oracle simply because they said it, just because they're known. And this works. Point number two, be high energy. Energy attracts attention. High energy people are compelling and interesting even when they're doing something dumb or saying something dumb because you always want to see what they're going to do next. Dennis Rodman was this type of person. There are many people on the internet who do the exact same thing. I had a college teammate named Justin who made the basketball team even though he had no definable basketball skill simply because he had more energy than everybody else in the gym. Point number three, be good looking. If people like how you look, you can get attention just through that, even if you have very little substance behind it. Science proves that we like to be around people who look good. If any of you have ever been to a Hooters or certain restaurants or especially in Las Vegas, there are women who work at these places that look good and they are selectively chosen. You can't go in there if you don't look up to the physical standards of the way that they want you to look. The hiring manager is not going to hire you to work there simply because you don't look good enough. They want you to look 
good in a certain way because they have they believe for whatever reason that good looking people are going to get more customers to come in get them to stick around longer and spend more money which equates to more business and this is scientifically proven that's why they do it why do instagram models women who are doing workouts become so popular even though they're all doing the exact same workouts and most of the workouts that they're doing probably is not going to get you the body that they have but people sign up anyway why is that it's because they are compelling the way that they look other women want to be something like that. They want to get just a little piece of it. And men are following them, not because they're doing the workouts. They're not doing the squats or the, ex the butt exercises. But they just want to see the results of those squats and the butt exercises. That's all. You become an overnight celebrity if you are willing to leverage your looks, if you have looks to leverage. Point number four, a captivating personality. Something about the way you think, talk, present yourself, your opinions, they all can draw attention. Personally, I think this is where... I am able to compel people it's through my personality and it's not necessarily that I'm the, the bubbliest person out there or have to be the friendliest. Your personality can just be the way that you think. It can be your perspective, your the opinions that you have, the way that you approach certain topics that people think they know how you're going to approach it. You approach it in a different way. Maybe it's the way you build arguments. All of these things can be compelling. Personality can be expressed through, via speaking, dressing, writing, music, art. Or many other ways point number five you can combine these elements not just have one but combine multiple elements you can do even better and multiply their effects so if you want to draw more attention to yourself you want to be more compelling you want more people to pay attention to you i just gave you a crash course and how it's done and you can rewind this take it over and over again so you memorize it and use all of them and i guarantee more attention will accrue to you work on your game dre all day